Hello, welcome back for round three. We won the die roll once again. And let's see what we get for our opening hand. That looks pretty good. We got a keeper in round one for the first time. No, we don't want to mulligan this. So the hand's a bit slow, but overall, pretty good. In some matchups, the second Geist might be a bit lackluster. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the opening hand. Just gonna play tap steam lens and pass the game. Okay. It's always important to think for a moment what fetch land you want to play because of what lands you might want to fetch, since some fetch lands like March Flats are fairly limited in what they can fetch, and you also want to maximize your options of being able to fetch a basic land if you have to stuff like that. So I think the best option might to might just be to play the scouting town, pass, fetch a breeding pool or a stomping ground and a fern, and then fetch an untapped lanes with the march flats to take as little damage as possible and have the mana for turn 3 next. So our opponent is most likely either twin or storm. Most likely it's twin I think because storm plays more cantrips and probably would have played a cantrip time. So I'm assuming we are playing against twin. Which makes it even more important that we are on the play because turn 3 guys is pretty good on the play, pretty bad on the draw since they can just combo and kill you with the play guys on turn 3 on the draw. So because I assume we are playing against twin, I'm going to fetch a bit more aggressively to have more flexible mana so they can uh, shut down your mana less with the come to play trigger of the creatures and prevent us from having backup removal open during their turn. So I think what I want here is probably just Well, I don't really see a good way to give us mana to pr protect us from the exile while still giving us green. So we either pretty much sacrifice having green for now, or the cutter that we might draw into, or just patch as we planned, be a bit more vulnerable to the comes to play trigger of exile and Fessamite, and be able to cast whatever we draw. And I think. Well, we're gonna fetch Dompic around here, so we at least can hold an Helix, which Breeding Pool wouldn't allow us. So I think we can just fetch a place here, since Misty Lane Forest provides us with like a hell of the next time. So we can to some extent protect us from his options. He's probably gonna remand that guy, so there's not much we can do about that. As long as he doesn't have an Exarch, we can go Geist with both back up next to him. But we will see. It's going for it on the upkeep. As long as he doesn't tap the planes. Oh, well, he has Exarch. And he's probably also going to tap the planes. So. Just to play here as much as it hurts is to just keep letting him the exile draw and hold the exile play land and go. Since keeping three mana up each turn to prevent him from comboing is just way too much, also he might eventually draw into enough mana to protect the exile and combo, so we have to get rid of it right away. 
and now we're going to fetch the header form in the header form format and we even have a pretty flexible manner here so we just drop the guys to oh, he has another reload in the form of snapcast function which is pretty annoying and I think we just have to hold here right away and most likely gonna fetch a single form the other time which gives us 3 red, 3 white, 2 blue and should protect us as much as possible from lands being kept. Mm. Yeah, I think that's pretty well the best. Best excellent is pretty sweet, and I think we just have to leave planes untapped here just because of the tectonic edge. Otherwise, we could just leave a uh, sacred foundry untapped. But there's no reason to do that. So I think we just. I think I might just want to keep the option of playing Snapcaster. So I'm gonna play the guys like that. So we can play a Snapcaster and turn for Pyra if we really want to, which is very unlikely, but always good to keep your options open as much as possible. I guess that would have been a reason to potentially leave the sacred foundry untapped so that we are not forced to pass here because now we sadly have to pass the aggro the Pesna Knight since otherwise he could come both on his turn potentially by playing a land, edging the steam vents on his upkeep, uh, like edging the steam vents on his upkeep, for example, then combing on his main phase. It's even safe from the board. That game is not looking too well for us. Okay, that's weird. Let's hope it doesn't have a dispel. Or in that case, we go into a, an answer for a dispel. So, we're just going to lightning bolt. That's not interesting. Seems like it might be something like the list from uh, RC from the top 8 of the photo. I think he had one space name in it. The space name is fairly uncommon in the lists, which makes me assume that it's most likely RC's list. Depending on what is going on in this hand, we might actually be in a fairly decent position because Geist is very hard for him to stop and kills him pretty quickly. So, unless he can make threat into combo us again, we should be in decent shape here. And even if he manages to like trade a Pestamite for the Geist, we still have a backup Geist. So it would actually be kind of good for us if he has a Pestamite and attempts to trade. It would turn on our, gu our guys and also limit his chances to draw into a combo. He doesn't have it. That's what I said. Sometimes they just run out of ways to threaten you, can't deal with the guys, and guys just gets the job done even if the game is looking kind of grim. Because we are out of protection now also. So I think I want the third Grimmelomancer, the spell, spell appears, and then click a click against the snapcaster mages. I'm usually not the I'm usually not the biggest fan of counterflux, 
just because it's very clunky. Definitely want to wear it here in this plug mode and so that's good. And it also stops the grill half of the combo. So let's see. I don't think we want Helix. Pretty clunky and only kills the Pestamide. I mean, true, it combos reasonably with the Grim Elemental, but I don't think it's worth it when you have to cut stuff eventually. And I think we probably want to cut the Mercato, and it seems good in theory, but it gets blocked by Exarch and Spurskite Kite and dies to Lightning Bolt. Dever at least doesn't get fucked. Sure, it still dies to Lightning Bolt, but it doesn't get blocked. And guys, it's just too good not to have. So I think on the draw, we might be able to shave one because it's more risky on the draw. Also, as you could see, drawing a second is often lackluster. It's also reasonable to consider to board in explosives because if you get to a point where you can stick an explosive for three, it's hard for them to combo through that. But it's also pretty slow and pretty clunky and only works in a few games. So I think I like the other cards in the deck more. There's a case to be made for Mana League not, Mana League not being that great, but especially on the draw, it protects you from like them porting you on your upkeep on turn 3, since you can just Mana League it for example. So I still think Mana League is worth it. Okay, submit. So, not the greatest hand, but a decent keep. So, we're going to keep and play Island to Zero Ambitions here, I think. It's reasonable to consider to just play a fetch land, fetch and play Zero Ambitions actually, just because if you, in case you have to top, both, uh, put both cards on top from Zero Ambitions. You really don't want to fetch them away. So I think we probably actually just can go Eric Lisa fetch Steam Man's here since that allows us to fetch whatever duo we want with the Skeleton Car and the basic planes with large flats, which also completely protects us as much as possible from a potential flat moon. And gives us turn 3 even though we click one. Okay, that might be a spell here. No, just a basic land fetch. Probably into a deep end of turn. Okay, that's the case where I probably want to talk twice since the dealing click is really really good in setting up Geist and generally getting a clue of how aggressive you can be and what they are actually able to do because the hardest thing in that matchup is actually that you have to play as if they have everything because if you don't and they have it you lose so as long as you can afford to you have to play very cautiously and actually getting to see the hand of a twin player takes away a lot of their strengths and potential to stay in, in the game so I think I probably put click second and geist first because if I want to fetch, I rather fetch away the second click than the geist here, I think. Since I'm likely going to turn three click into turn four geist with the untapped fetch hand for pass refer. It's also important to keep in mind that it's worth having an untapped, not cracked fetch hand that they can't port with their Pestamite or Exarch. So you can fetch in response into like an untapped sacred foundry and still have pass or bolt protection on it. So worth noting keeping a fetch land as your last land and playing it and not cracking it unless you have to is pretty relevant. There's the spell scale. Okay, guys, I mean I think I probably just wanna lay the March flex 
have like play the serum visions, draw the click, see what I have on top, and then probably play the mock flats. Let's do it. Here's the guys, we definitely don't want another land. And I don't think we want it ever either. So just yeah, just gonna put the dagger on bottom. Play the watch flats, which allows us to potentially end of turn pass the spells kind, untap, snapcast with the pass, pass for the video. Or like if they go X or press the light and they will click in response, take away the card. Sure. Yeah, he's probably gonna have to the land. So yeah, the best thing is before he untaps the land in case he has this spell or spell pierce, we probably wanna just pass the pestermite and make him redirect it to the spell's head for two damage. And if he doesn't it's fine and we get to start clicking. Because if he untaps it just counters the pass. So I think planes is still better here than the second foundry. So also because the platform still. So might even be that it just lets the pestamas pesta might get exiled, but that's fine considering we have click and first. And spells is not that big and deal for us even. Yeah. I expected that. Because now we can either just Drop a Geist, which I think we are actually going to do, and then protect everything with the group. Not entirely sure. I have to think about it and see what we draw and how. Oh, yeah, it's only going to see on Vision's there. That's interesting. And he must have a land in hand that's a second red source, because I'm pretty sure he plays at least one basic mountain and he will fetch it. So. He either has a blood moon or more likely just another land in hand that's a red source. So we can assume that one of his four cards is a land fairly safely. So I think I rather drop guys than, than go snap caster pass or click here, just because as we saw in game one, guys runs out way with the game pretty quickly. And we have enough stuff to keep him from comboing while Geist is running away with the game. Like I said, there is the land. And there is the blood moon. So he had the land and the blood moon. But glad to see that I used that properly. The only sad thing is that we can't cast click now. So if I expect a Blood Moon, it might actually be better to just click and potentially take the Blood Moon if it's his best card, or leave it and take whatever is his best card, because we can still play Geist under a Blood Moon, but it might just not matter that much, because he still has no way to deal with the Geist. And we have the Snapcaster also. I think I'm actually going to do here snapcaster as one spell sky to increase the pressure. It's not he's taking six a turn. That's a sweet draw. That even stops him from blocking the spell sky next turn. As long as he doesn't have out. And pretty much puts him back on the Okay, he's dead. You see? That matchup can go either way, and sometimes you just drop a guys and they can't do anything. Even though they have blood moon. Okay, that's it. We are 2 and 1 now. See you in round 4, or the last round, and hopefully it's 3 1. Be right back.